All right, joining us now is Juanita Tolliver, Crooked Media host, and Susan Del Percio, Republican strategist, both serving as MSNBC political analyst. And Garrett, going back to 2017, it's so true. Uh, we're watching a tweet that is driving, again, the news and that which we're covering. Susan, to you on that very note and what Lindsey Graham was saying, the senator saying, hey, Trump loves a fight. This helps him. This is the best thing that could have happened for him. What do you think? Well, it's not the best thing that could happen for Donald Trump. An indictment is never good for a candidate. Um, but what's interesting is, is that Donald Trump, as we know, doesn't see a case brought against him as a legal problem. He sees it as a PR problem. And I think what this tweet was meant to do was to make the conversation all about him. And there is no way he's going to go up to New York and just quietly, you know, turn himself in without having a massive crowd in the back room for the background for the TV cameras. This is all about driving a good PR stunt. And Donald Trump, at this point, all of this, people are saying it's bad for the, the district attorney in New York. It's a Democratic town. This district attorney is probably going to ride this indictment to being at least uh, the attorney general of New York State. But Juanita, do Democrats now kind of have to tie themselves to the success of this case here? Is it only a conviction uh, kind of get you where you need to go if you're a Democrat saying that Donald Trump has to be held accountable for X, Y, or Z? Not quite. And I don't want us to get too tunnel, too much of a debate about a tunnel vision here, because let's be real, there are indictments that could potentially come from the state and federal level. And I think it's critical that we remember that this could be the first one that could yield a potential historic indictment of a former president. But it is not the only one. And what I think is important for Democrats to do is to remind the public of that at every single turn. This could be something that we see not only in New York, but also out of Fulton County, Georgia, with Fonnie Willis, as well as from the Department of Justice with their January 6th investigation. And I think it's important for Democrats to emphasize not only the potential for multiple indictments, but the fact that accountability writ large means Donald Trump facing accountability for all of his actions, especially January 6th, knowing that without that accountability, he could be primed to try to repeat that effort in 2024. Susan, old playbook for, for president or the former president, and he is uh, calling for protests. He's saying we got to fight for this country, and he's equating it with what he wants in his view. Concerned and about he that? Wants to, yeah. He wants to drum up his base. There's no doubt about it. He sees the polls. Ron DeSantis is catching up to him. He likes this uh, situation for himself. Of course, it doesn't help you in a general election, but as um, Garrett was saying earlier on, he's going to need to get independent women, and he's just not going to get it while he's under indictment or probably Absolutely for any other not. in any other way. So I think at this point, what we need to do is have Don. You know, when you're looking at the situation with Donald Trump, it's not going to fully play out until after the general election. So Democrats would be wise, or anyone challenging Demo uh, Donald Trump, to simply say. This process needs to play out. You are not, into, you know, everyone under the, is, is innocent until proven guilty. Let, let the bad news play its own self out. It doesn't need help. Juanita, we've been looking at some video here on the other side of the screen of a solitary boat with a huge Trump flag floating in the intercoastal waterway behind me just within the last hour. Is there a political risk here to the former president if you throw a giant protest and nobody comes? I mean, <laughs> he has effectively dared the DA to indict him and suggested there'll be a backlash, but what if he doesn't get one? If he doesn't get one, then he'll lie about getting one, Garrett. We know how he feels about crowds. We know how much he also <laughs> likes to lie about them when they don't show up. But the reality is, I, I think Susan hit the nail on the head earlier when she talked about this as a PR stunt. The only thing I'll say in addition to that is when Donald Trump calls for a crowd, people do tend to show up, and we know those crowds can turn violent like we saw on January 6th. And so I think of this less as a direct threat to the district attorney and more of a threat to the local police officer and law enforcement officials on the ground in New York City who would have to deal with this type of mob directly if they do show up. All right, uh, Juanita Tolliver and Susan Del Percio, two strategists. We've got a lot of politics to chew on about whatever's gonna happen in New York over the next week or two. Thank you both for coming on with us.